Hi there everyone, my name is Christian Eschbach and welcome to another one of my album reviews. Today we're going to be taking a look at a Greatest Hits album, um, it, but it is the only album I own by one of my favorite vocalists, um, and that vocalist would be Ann Wilson. I love Ann Wilson. Oh, great set of pipes. Great set of pipes. But as good as Ann Wilson is, not as great without Nancy. And I'm talking about Heart, obviously. Uh, this here is Heart's Greatest Hits. This Greatest Hits package was released in 2008. Um, I'm not sure if it's been fully remastered, but the sound quality is pretty good on it. sounds pretty remastered to me. Um... There are only two songs in this album that I'm not huge on. But those two songs are kind of the more modern-y songs. Sort of. Because this album completely skips the 80s, pretty much. Uh, <laughs> so, the album opens up with Strong, Strong Wind. Um, I don't remember if that was recorded specifically for this, if it was a more modern one. Yes... If you are into more acoustic folksy, it's nice. It's not the heart I want to listen to. It's also not the heart I want opening up an album. Oh man, that that to be opening this greatest hits package with strong strong wind. That uh, was a mistake. I get why they did it. You know, that way the song gets some notoriety. It's more likely to get single push that way. There, there's a few good reasons for doing it. No. No, 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 no. Because, like, the next two songs or even after that, it... it okay. So let's get this. So then we get to track two. Track two... Tr track two... Is Magic Man. Magic Man is killer, man. Uh, now, I will go on and on and on about Anne and Nancy Wilson because they are the heart of heart. Ha ha! The heart and soul of heart. Ha ha! The brains, the whatever. Um, I don't have a list of the rest of the band members that played on this particular Greatest Hits package. So I can't say, but there have been some phenomenal guitarists over the years and stuff like that. And... The thing you have to remember is when you're hearing the electric and the leads and stuff like that, it's not necessarily Nancy doing that. Uh, now, she does have her stuff that she does. Ooh, we go and get into that. But, but Magic Man, just fantastic. And I, I love, I love very much about listening to this song and getting very much the female perspective on, you know, why they're so in love with, we'll say, the bad boy, or why they're so in love with this guy that, you know, really, you know, Mama can just see is a problem. And he's a magic man, Mama. Oh, he's got magic hands. <laughs> you know, so... It, it, you get it. You understand, right? You know, it's, it's really cool, though, because I really dig it. And... I really wish Hart would have done better than they did do. I think part of the reason they didn't, though, is because they do have a lot more acoustic or softer stuff. Um, realistically, Zeppelin fans, based on my greatest hits knowledge of Hart, I have never heard any individual Hart albums, except for Dog and Butterfly. It's the only one I've ever listened to on its own. Um, and that's only because my mom happened to have a copy of it. Uh, even my uh, stepmom, who was a big Heart fan, I think she only had a Heart Greatest Hits even. I, I don't remember. Um, but other than Radio Hits, I, I haven't heard a lot of Heart. Um, and Heart really could have been Zeppelin without trying. And I'll get more into that as we go. So, uh, now, next track... Now, when I said Nancy Wilson doesn't usually play the guitar that often, uh, or doesn't play the electric, or doesn't play leads that often or whatnot, well, 
Crazy on You has this whole beautiful acoustic lead opening, man. This nice, great solo going on where she's just going to town on it, man. And apparently it has a proper name. I can't think of the name of it. Um, and I know that when you watch them do Crazy on You live, it's definitely more extended and it's fantastic. And just watching her rock out on the that acoustic, man. Oh, it's killer. Um, but Crazy on You, man, it, as much as, you know, it's that hard hit. As much as you love that part of that song, it's that insane strumming, acoustic strumming on Crazy on You that's fucking insane, man. Like, seriously, huh? Oh, that woman is a guitarist. Mm. All right. Just, oh, fuck yeah. All right, then the album slows down a little bit again. We get to Dreamboat Annie. Now, I really do dig Dreamboat Annie. It, it's this beautiful kind of flowy... The, the title says it all, Dreamboat Annie, you know, and the music captures it. Not not just the lyrics. I mean, the actual music captures everything you would expect a Dreamboat Annie to sound like. Um, if you're into stuff, if, if you're in the mood where you want some high tempo, you want some power, you want some force, you want some gravitas, we will say, no, not Dreamboat Annie. <laughs> but it is a fantastic song all the same. And then we get into Barracuda. I'm not even trying to do those beautiful lyrics, man. Oh, shit, man. Oh. Those vocals, ooh, and that delivery, oh my god. Like, the, the this Barracuda could, if it's not a top 10, my, one of my all-time top 10 favorites, it's definitely like a top 20 all-time favorite, man. Because this song has everything you could want in it. Everything you could want in it. You mean, you, everything. Just, oh. Uh, from there, we go on to Little Queen. Uh, Little Queen's cool. I... I do... Re it's, if you are one of my regular viewers, you've heard this show. Little Queen's one of those songs I really like listening to when the album's playing through. When it's not playing through, I don't think about it as much. But it is really a solid kind of song. Uh, it's just one of those ones that doesn't... Doesn't stick for me. I know a lot of people it does stick for though. And then we go into Kick It Out. I like Kick It Out, man. It, it's just so much fun and listen to them rock it out and just yeah. And it's a good rock out song too, man. You know, just and, and I love when Nancy gets going on those vocals, man. Just abs or I mean sorry, when Anne gets going on those vocals, just absolutely fantastic. Um, and then you get Love Alive, and, yeah, um, I'm not sure how I feel about Love Alive. I mean, it's not a bad tune. Just not, I mean, whatever. Uh, Heartless. Oh, another one, man. Just so much strength in that song, man. Heartless. Heartless. You know, I mean, and I'll be honest, there's some days where I find myself singing the, you know, the Cheech Marin version. Hard ass, hard ass, you know, you know, just can't help myself. But, uh, great, great, great song again, man. And the nice part I, I want to mention at this point with Heart is... Their songs really do have a bit of variance, but they tend to do run, like, a lot of the bigger songs, the bigger hits, they actually tend to run a little bit longer in time. 
Like Magic Man clocks in at 528. Crazy on You is at 451. Barracuda is 422. Uh, Heartless is at 502. So, you know, they weren't afraid to do some longer songs. And with their longer songs, they didn't do the gratuitous guitar solos and stuff like that. When they do a longer song, it's like when Alice Cooper does a longer song, you know? It just, it's because that's the way the song works and flows. And it's not like they're sticking extra crap into it just to make it sound like something else. Zeppelin was really good that way too. Although sometimes those solos, at least live, could get a little out of control. Paige liked to yank a little bit. A little bit. Uh, and then we get to, after Heartless, we're on to Straight On. Straight On's a good tune. Another really good, solid tune. Uh, is it one that I think about so much? Not so much, but it is a good, solid tune. Uh, then we get to Dog and Butterfly. Oh, okay. Here's the weird thing with me. I like Jewel. You ever heard of Jewel? Go check out Jewel. Jewel's first two albums. Uh, absolutely adored those first two albums. I think I lost both of them in the divorce. Somehow I lost my Jewel albums in the divorce. I don't know. Uh, absolutely adored Jewel, though. And... I love that coffee shop... Sh coffee shop folksy kind of vibe she had going on that and the thing is is you know I really love that stuff and that's why I didn't like so much when she changed later and I love a lot of musicians when they kind of go that way or when they present that way but that doesn't mean that I necessarily want to hear a soft acoustic -y song and Dog and Butterfly that's the problem with me when it gets to Dog and Butterfly is to me it's a little bit of a more of a soft acoustic acoustic -y song I love it. I love the metaphors in it. I love where they go with it. Um, it's just... It's not what I want to hear them do, you know what I mean? Then we get into Even It Up. I love Even It Up. Um, I, I, I know that uh, I actually, there was one time when the song was playing and I actually got mad. I was, it was, the ex and I were having an argument and I actually said, you hear the song? This is what I want. This is what I want here. I want you to even it up. It's always craziness. Um, anyways, that, that's another thing. But I love even it up. And um, I love, I love even it up because I love the power behind it from a female perspective. Like there's, this is real. This is, you know, like, you hear the term feminism thrown around, and to me, these are real strong women. These are real powerful women. These are real, true, feminist, iconic women. Somehow, they, they, they get ignored way more than they should. And when you hear a song like them doing Even It Up, you get where they're coming from, because it was part of that... I want to say kind of firsty wave sort of feminism or whatnot. Uh, going maybe a little into second, but it was really, it was about a man bringing it to match the chick in the relationship because, you know, just even it up, you know. But the beauty of the song Even It Up is it could go either way. A dude could be singing it to a chick or a chick could be singing it to a dude and it works beautifully that way. Uh, and that's what makes it such a great song as far as I'm concerned. Um, Baby Lestrange, that one is an interesting tune. Um, a little bit different, a little bit interesting, a little bit experimental. And I kind of really dig the play on it, the vibe on it, you know, and just really kind of got this cool groove kind of going on, man. Uh, tell it like it is. Um, uh, I'm not sure how I feel about Tell It Like It Is. It's not a bad tune. It's one of those ones where if the album's playing through, I'll listen to it, but I don't. It's not a song I think about, want to think about. Even when the album's playing, I'm kind of like, okay. 
yeah, whatever, just let it go. And I feel it's kind of the same way about the next couple songs, really. Because uh, after that, you get into This Man Is Mine, which I believe, I want to say is a cover. Uh, an old... Um, I want to say kind of doo-wop-y sort of cover. It's cute. It's nice. Uh, it doesn't work for me the way I would think that it would. You know, it, I mean, it, it's a good tune. It's a fun song. It's just not what I want to hear. Um, that goes into How Can I Refuse, which I just blank. 100% totally blank. Nothing. Sorry. And then the album finishes off with a live version of Led Zeppelin's Rock and Roll. Oh. Seriously. I would absolutely love, especially to hear... I would love, absolutely beyond belief, to hear Heart, or some variation of Heart. I, you know, I, I really don't care which variation it is. I'd love to hear Anne and Nancy Wilson with any multitude of musicians that could pull this off with them. Uh, honestly, if I were to put this together, Anne and Nancy Wilson, Jason Bonham, Jimmy Page is a fan, so see if Jimmy's maybe up to it. I'm not sure. No. John Paul Jones might be up to it. I don't know, but I love. I'd absolutely love to hear Hart do a whole entire Zeppelin album. Seriously, oh my god! You know, send me. Give me. You know, it might sound like a cheesy name or something like that, but call it the Heart of Zeppelin or something like that. You know, like and just pick the best, like the best Hart doable. Zeppelin songs. That'd be a killer album. Oh, I'd pay top money for all. Oh, well, not top money, okay, let's be fair. I'd pay good CD money. Um, I'd buy vinyl. I'd buy that on vinyl and CD. That would be worth something special to buy on vinyl and CD. Oh, do it up the artwork just right on it. Oh, that'd be such a gorgeous album. Oh, absolutely. Now that I've inspired this idea, if it does happen, I'd like to do the artwork or something and be involved with it somehow, please. Oh my god, please. Please. Can I, I'll just worship at you two ladies' feet for a while and act like a sad little puppy dog because you guys are, like, awesome. But anyway. All right. So, as you can hear, so the ending here where they end with rock and roll is just the best way to finish off this album. Oh my god, what a killer way to do it. And I absolutely love the way they do it. I mean, it's not the exact same, but no one can do rock and roll the exact same as the original band just because it's got cool, weird timing to it, which is impressive what, the, the fact that they did it. So, you know, it's just like, yes. Anyways, those are my views on the heart. Greatest hits album. It is a great album. If you if you have no heart, go pick this up. This is a great spot to start. If you're a fan of heart and you know other albums I should listen to, please, comment section, draw me a line. Let me know what should be the next heart album I pick up. Don't say Dog and Butterfly. I can go borrow that from my mom. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, suggest one of the good older albums uh, if you got one that I should definitely go pick up. Anyways, uh, as I said, leave a comment. Uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Otherwise, peace, love, take care.